Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for our Tech Tuesdays workshop series. Today we have Johnny Molina, who is an instructional assistant here at Learning Resources Wilson Campus, and he will um, present to you today turning images into interactive digital content for your presentations and posters. Um, welcome, Johnny. Um, go ahead, take it away. Thank you, Terry. Again, uh, so we're going to be doing the workshop for turning images into interactive digital content for your presentations and posters. So we'll be, we will be creating GIF images. We will be creating an animation portion and one that is also a slide. And we will be using Adobe Photoshop to do this. I know that there's um, this technology, right? So there's a bunch of other resources out there that can also help you create GIF images. For instance, the WhatsApp uh, text messaging application has a built-in feature that allows you to create uh, GIF images from videos, from portions of videos. You can crop it within the application to create GIF images. But we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop to do this today. A couple of weeks ago, we created a, we did a workshop uh, showing how to install the Adobe Photoshop. So uh, if you need if you need the footage to this video, just, uh, let me know and I will send you a link so you can see the step by step how to install the application. But this application is also available in our labs over at the computer foyer. You can come in and use it. You have access to this as a student. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, I see you have it. That's good. Okay, so let's get started with the, the workshop. Learning Resources presents uh, turning images into interactive digital content for your presentations and posters. So I mentioned that we're going to be creating uh, animations, right? This is basic animations. There's going to be no programming or anything like that. So a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Johnny Molina. I've been working for Miami Dade College since 2013. I'm an MDC alumni, and I hold a couple of certificates in a couple of tech fields, such as um, augmented and virtual reality, and also CCNA and others. I'm also part of the learning resources, video groups, and technology group. So I'm always creating digital content. Uh, some of my uh, duties include creating uh, video tutorials, showcasing students how to access some of our resources here at really Learning Resources or showing uh, students how to use uh, like applications such as the MyMDC app and others. I'm also known as the technologist here at Wolfson Campus. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm an advanced user of a lot of things, but I do know a lot of the basics and a lot of programs, so I'm able to provide uh, some help. And I also manage the, the multimedia studio right here at Wolfson Campus. We have a state-of-the-art equipment to help you shoot uh, video presentations, or if you want to record just the B-roll, the audio for a video, we can help you shoot that, and we can help you uh, edit some of the background noise on the audio as well. Uh, I see everything has a question. Is it for free? Uh, what is it for free? That are we talking about uh, Adobe Photoshop? No, I was talking. Hi, how are you doing today? I was more so talk, talking about, you said um, you help film, B-roll, and all that. So all that is free, available to the yes. students? Yes, this is a service for the students, yes. Oh, I'm a uh, student. I'm actually at the Wilson campus. Oh, perfect. Yes, uh, so we have, uh, well, I can't turn the camera around to show you, but yeah. We do have a camera here mounted uh, to help students capture presentations. If we need to go on the road, we also have a... That's what I was going to get to now. We have 360 cameras that students can use. So like, if you have a project and you want to shoot some extra footage to immerse anybody that's going to look at your project, we can shoot actually shoot 360 video. And I can show you how to edit that video if you want. Or we can just upload it to YouTube to give a 360 access of, uh, of your, you know, when you were working with team teammates. Uh, on your project, or if it, if it was a project that you were working by yourself, you can still shoot that footage. And then we, I'll show a little bit later how we can use a QR code to just link straight to that footage 
so that you can give more access or backstage access to your project to anyone who's viewing your posters, etc. And um, also, I gave a workshop uh, that showed how to edit some of that footage, editing 360 footage, and you can add animation to it. And I can give you a link again at the end of the workshop. I'll do that and give you a link so you can see how that works. Okay, so um, so as we're getting ready, we're going to be shooting. Uh, we're going to be deciding what you want to eat to do for your project, right? Are you going to do an animation GIF or you want to go over with a slide, right? So if you're going to shoot an animation, animation will probably require, depending on your idea, to, for you to like, take a lot of pictures of an instance. This is uh, animation is good to showcase uh, an instance or like, you know, uh, an important event of, of your project. So you can give a little, a little spice with an animation. And uh, this is typically done perhaps in a day or so. You can take maybe 10 to 20 pictures and then you can add animation on Photoshop to, to make give it a good look. Um, OK, so then if we want to go with a slide, this is better to showcase a more prolonged process of the project. Let's say your project is taking maybe a week or two weeks. So every day you're sh you're taking a picture of your project and how you're documenting your progress of it. So we can add that in a slide. Like each picture from each day can be a slide, and they can you can show progress to your user later on. Okay. Um, so once you have decided that, uh, the good thing about this is that you can choose to do both. You can create an animation, and you can also create a slide. So you can have best of both worlds to give access to your viewer. Uh, and we can create later, we, you can create uh, what's called um, like a compilation or uh, you know, you're, where you're going to be housing everything for that project. So any animation you create or any slide, you can house it there. And then you can share that link directly via QR code to your viewers so that they can get access, backstage access to all their information for that project. And uh, so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to have to create uh, a folder just to keep things clean, because this is how it works on Adobe Photoshop. You can create a folder for each animation you're going to create or each slide. And every picture you're taking that you feel that you're going to use for the animation, you store it on the animation folder. And the same goes for the slide. And that's for that. We're going to come back to this uh, later on. So let's get started with Adobe Photoshop. I have Adobe open already. And we're going to start off by creating an animation. So remember that this at this point, I have already created the folder. And I have already have created the, have taken the pictures for the animation. And I have everything stored there. So we're going to start off by going to, to do this. We're going to go to File on the top left hand, left hand corner. And we're going to go down to scripts. From scripts, we're going to go to load files into stack. We're going to click that, and this is going to populate the load layers window. So here, we're going to browse for the images that we took for the animation. Uh, the folder's already open, but I'm just going to turn back a little bit so you can see. I have several, several folders created. Uh, I decided that this William folder was going to be the animation one. So we're going to go ahead and open. You see, I have 12 pictures. So we're going to select all the pictures. And as you notice, I also have them in order, in numerical order. So this is because I want to present these pictures in that order. And this is important when you're creating animations. And it, it's a good habit to rename your pictures in the order that you want in order to properly present your animation. So we're going to click OK. And then we're going to click OK again. So this is going to start to populate all of the images. Over on the right side, you're going to see the layers for all 12 images being generated. OK, so there we go. 
So this is going to be the first image that we want in our animation. But before we continue, if for any reason you do not see this area here, the timeline tab open in your workspace for Adobe Photoshop, you have to make sure that you go to Windows and then click on Workspace and then you click on Motion in order to for your workspace, workspace to present you with the timeline option. Okay. okay, so the next thing is we're gonna create the first frame. Typically, if it's the first time you're doing this, you're gonna, this is the option that's gonna be up, create video timeline, but that's not what we want. We're to create an animation. So we're gonna select create frame animation. So once we do that, we can click on it. Okay, so as you can see, the first frame has been added and it's for the picture that the first picture that we want, the animation. Okay, so now we need to add the other 12 pictures. To do that, we're gonna head over to the timeline option. We go all the way to the right corner, those little three rows, we click that, and this is gonna populate a little side window with more options. We're gonna select make frames from layers. Next, okay, so if we click this, this is going to add all the other pictures as frames in our timeline. So we go over, you can see that it is, they have all been added, but something is, something is off, right? Like I, It looks like you put the last picture as the first frame. So to make this correction, it looks like the last picture, the first picture is last, so it's in reverse. We're going to need to reverse that, and to do that, we need to click on the option again, and then we're going to click reverse frames. So now this is uh, this is going to organize it how we want it. So as you can see, uh, this is changing to in the exact order that we want as we select each frame. Okay. So now. Actually, we have already created an animation here by just simply adding the pictures here on the timeline. We have created an animation. The difference is that this animation, if you notice, close and it's very small, but if this is the timing for each picture, for each frame. And right now it's set at zero, so there's really no delay on whatever animation is being applied. So let's just click uh, play, just so we can see what it's doing. Uh, so the, the young man is flying. <laughs> so that's, we have an animation. Just like that, you have created an animation. But uh, I think that he's, he's got way too much energy. Um, we want to do it a little different. By the way, if you notice here, it says forever. You can change the amount of loops for the GIF or for the animation that you want. If you click on this arrow, you can set it to just have one animation or three, or you can even click on a cost on order so you can set it to like 15 or something like that. Okay, say 21. <laughs> So as you can see now, it has 21 loops, but I'm gonna just switch it back to forever. That's just if you wanted to set an actual number for the loop, maybe five, for it to loop five times and be done with it. But uh, no, we want more. So I'm gonna show you now how to switch the timings of all the frames here. I'm gonna click on the first picture. You see here, we're clicking on the first picture, frame, and we're gonna hold shift, and then we're gonna Click on the last frame here at the end. If you notice, all of the frames are now selected, and we can now change the timing for all of them. So we want to keep it at the same uh, timing. That way it looks constant. It looks good, because if we have one at a 0 0.2 seconds and another one at 0 0.1, the animation is not the same. The effect is not the same. So we're going to set it to 0 0.1, and let's take a look how that looks. Okay, he's still going a little fast, but it looks more presentable. So you imagine if you have 
actually around maybe like, let's say you have 50 pictures here so you're showcasing a little bigger of an event how it would look very cool in this uh, scenario okay so just so that you can see i'm gonna select all of them again and i'm gonna set it to the 0 0.5 seconds timing so you can get a preview of so you see, this is more, this is a lot slower. I think it still looks pretty cool. So if you have about 20 images uh, of an event of your project that you want to show, this is very, a very cool effect to have happen. And the background, the, I did the background stable. If you have a stable background, you don't, I shot this, I took the pictures with uh, my phone camera. I just set the camera uh, against um, one of the monitors and kept the, the background in a constant so that you can give them a more cool animation. But you can be proactive in moving. I've seen some animations where you, the, you, the point of view of the camera varies and the effect is just as awesome. Okay, so um, I, I think I like him with a little more energy of 0 0.1. So I'm going to show you how to save that. So let's just refresh to make sure it's in 0 0.1. There you go. OK. So this is uh, just a refresh. That's how you change the timings of any of the animations. You just click on the first frame, and you hold the Shift button on your keyboard. And then you click on the very last frame, and you, see, you select all of them. And then you click on this arrow to check the timing. You will see later that for a slide animation, I will recommend something slower, like one second or two seconds. Since you're the, what you're cycling is like more pictures that are themed a little different. There might be from different times or different days. So they're better to be shown in a slide format. OK, so to save this. Uh, animation we're going to go to the top left we're going to click on file and we're going to click on export and then we're going to click on save for web now in older photoshop versions this option is going to be somewhere down here but for us it's up here so we're going to click that okay so it's taking a little bit to load i suggest uh, letting your laptop or your system the picture here before you start changing options okay so the first thing you want to make sure is that we're on gif we're down only the gif format will capture all the animations we just did uh, you're going to want to select adaptive here it just works better for the quality of the picture to select adaptive rather than the other options i've, uh, I've tested them and there's a lot of uh, frame breaks or vertical horizontal lines that appear on the pictures whenever you do that. Diffusion is uh, just pre-selected. Pre and then colors, you're going to want to make sure that it's on 256. That way, all the colors are being captured correctly for your image. And then the rest, you can leave that as is. Uh, then make sure that convert to sRGB is selected. That way, the, the GIF will come out in a color that uh, you know it's supported widely on all systems from mobile to uh, Apple and Windows. Okay. And now we're going to move on to this option. This is one of the crucial options, image size. Uh, remember I mentioned that we recommend between 600 to 800 pixels here on width. You always, always want to select uh, between 600 to 800. That way the file size is at a decent uh, decent size otherwise uh, mobile might have a problem loading it so i see you i'm uh, now i'm going to click on save and we're going to save it on or william animation for okay let me close this up and here we go okay, so this is animation one Okay, so we have created our first animation. Um, so I'm going to quickly go over, close this, and go over the slide. 
creating a slide. It's exactly the same process. The only thing that will change is the timing because for slides, we're recommending a little more between one to two seconds. So again, we're going to go through the same process. We're going to go, we're going to go to file, scripts, and we're going to submit load files into stacks and we'll get the load layers window and we're going to browse. Again, I've already worked on this, so I have this uh, the slide pictures uh, already created. Let me delete this so we don't confuse them. But these are the, the pictures that I have prepared for the slide. As you can see, they're totally different from each other, right? Different sets. So an animation may not work the best in this case scenario. So we're going to select all the pictures. And we're going to click OK. And click OK. You notice that I did not number those pictures because the order doesn't really matter <laughs> in this case, uh, since the what you're doing is more like a slide. Um, so this is a cool uh, picture back in December for celebrating the holidays here at Walton Campus. This was very good. <laughs> OK, so as you can see, all the pictures have been populated here. And again, we're making sure that the timeline tab is available for us. And we're going to create the first animation by clicking the frame animation button. So the first one has been added. And then we're going to add the rest by clicking on the timeline option and make frames from layers. So I see Finn and me have the same smile. <laughs> so. I actually, I don't want that to be the first picture of the slide. I think I think I want something more presentable. <laughs> like, uh, like I like this one. So it's the last one. So I'm just going to reverse it again. I'm going to click here and click reverse frames. And uh, see, now that's the first one. If you notice, uh, on some of these pictures, as we're checking it, they're not fitting everything. But we can resize them. We can resize them by if you click, if you click on the picture, you'll see that the picture will be activated. It has a little uh, squares uh, around the side that we can drag to resize the image. So I'm just dragging it to the bottom, and uh, and I'm dragging it a little so it's sitting in the picture frame. And all you gotta do to upset this is click this top arrow here to upset the edit that you made. Okay. So let's go through the other frames to see if there's other pictures like that. See, there's another one here. And again, we click the picture to activate it, and then drag and drag to make a picture frame. And then click the, the check mark to accept the resize. So here's another one. So we activate it and then drag to resize. And you can drag left or right to Oh look, that's the camera that I would tell you, that I would mention earlier that we have to shoot a presentation. So it's portable, so we can totally go shoot somewhere else if you if you're not a big fan of the study room. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna accept this change here. Okay, so this one also is not completely full. I, I like that change. Accept this first one. And I think that should be it, right? Okay. Okay, so once again, so I'm going to show how this looks with no delay. So if we just click play here on the animation, you're going to see that this is just going to fly, right? So this is no, this is uh, not good. So we want to make sure that we change the timing so that this looks more presentable. So Again, if you were shooting from different days for your project, you're going to have a picture or two pictures from each day as you document the, the, pros, uh, the progression of your project. So if you're imagining it's going at 0, 0.0 seconds every time it changes, so it's not very legible. Even after 0 0.1 seconds, if you notice, it's still too fast. So I will recommend a little more, like 3.5 is still a little too fast. Ah, I like I like the effect too. 
but you gotta calculate, right? So if you have, I only have eight images here. So if you do the timing for one second per image, then it's gonna take eight seconds for your you or your viewers to um, to go through the, all the information, right? So if you have 20 pictures and you put the timing at one second, that's still very uh, acceptable. But if you have 20 pictures, or let's say you have 30 pictures, and you set the timing for two seconds, then it's gonna take <laughs> it's gonna take the viewer like almost two minutes to to see the entire content, and you might lose them, or they might not be able to see all your content. So if you you have about eight pictures, then I think a good timing is two seconds. And let's preview how that looks. So you're giving the user a little more time to gather information from the content that you're presenting them in a slide format. Um, so these all these pictures are in a vertical um, or a portrait view. But if you had a landscape, it will work just the same. And also, you're presenting more information. This just happened. I just happened to use this uh, as an example. And I wanted to keep it constant. So. If you're using landscape pictures, make sure all your pictures are live landscape or 16 by 9. If you're using portrait or portrait, you want to make sure that all your pictures are taken with that orientation as well. Okay, so I'm going to leave this at two seconds. And uh, I'm going to show you now how to export this. Again, you go to File. We're going to go to Export. And we're going to save this program. Okay, since we exported a file, Previously, all our information is already recorded. The only thing we need to watch for is the image size. Remember, between 600 to 800 pixels for the width is okay. So we're going to click the save. And uh, why not? Let's just save it on the same folder where the animation is. And we're going to name this slide one. So we have saved, we have our digital content now created. So how can we make this uh, information information accessible to the to the users on your on your posters? So we can we're going to first need to upload it. So we're going to uh, probably create an account on GIF gfi.com will ask you to, to, to upload any GIF files and you can even add memes or text to your GIF images as well. So as you can see I have already created one here. I'm going to create an account and I already have populated it with some of the images you created. So this is a preview of what my portal looks like. But we're going to be creating a collection of images that you can use for your project. So for this, you can simply, if you go here to the top right hand corner, you go to collections. If you click add a new collection, you can create a new collection where you can host all your digital content that you have created. And then you can share that link via your poster to make to give it an interactive look so you can give your your viewers or your presentation uh, you know a more in-depth look and a backstage access to your project. So I have already created a collection so I'm just gonna click that here so you can see that it's actually it's not opening because it's empty. So let's just close it. So here we're gonna upload the two files we just created. We're gonna click on upload and then we're gonna click GIF. So that's what we created, a GIF image. And uh, the folder that they're located in, it's the William folder. And we're going to upload first the animation. We click the animation. And here, here's the preview of what we created. And what we're going to do is we're going to add it. It's not selecting. It's selecting here. Finally, I don't know what, what was happening there. <laughs> so I'm selecting the turning images uh, collection. 
and we're going to click upload. So this is going to host your image. So that upload is complete. And there you go. So now we have that uploaded and we can share it. If you only want to share one content, you can simply just choose to share that one. Click the share button and that will give you the link. So you can share the link directly by creating a QR, a QR code generator for that. But I'm going to show you how to share an, an entire collection. So we're going to click upload again so we can upload the second file we created. And now we're going to upload the slide file. Hopefully it's great. I don't know why my computer is glitching. Okay. Finally. Okay, so now it's selected. So we're adding this new the slide also the collection. And it's now complete. Now to view your collection, you can simply go to collections and you will see the turning images collection. So if you click it. I don't know why my mouse has been, uh, it hasn't been working properly since last night. But uh, let's see, so this is right. Okay, so we go this way, we can access the collection that you're creating for that, uh, for that project. So you can choose to create several animations or several slides for your project and then share that directly to your poster via QR code. Okay, so to copy the link, we go to the URL up top and we can click go to copy. Okay. And uh, there's, this is the QR code generator that I like using. This is the qr-code-generator.com. But you can simply go to Google and just type QR code and you'll get a countless of other suggestions to have a QR code generator create one for you for free. But I like this one. So let's say we want to make sure that uh, that, comp that compilation is uh, shared. We can paste the link here and over on the right side, it has generated a new QR code. So if we click the download, Just uh, wait a little bit, and you're going to see that this is going to be generating a QR code for us. So uh, we can add to any poster, to any poster or presentation that you're sharing. So let's. Oh, definitely, yeah. We realize we realize that there's a lot of information and details step by step. So uh, give us a, about a day and we'll be able to send you this so you can follow the step by step. Um, okay, so I'm going to rename QR code. QR code. Okay, so that the QR code has been saved. So just to give you an example, let's say that I wanted to add that QR code to my presentation here so that whoever I can instruct students to scan it. We we'll click insert and we click on pictures and we click this device. I saved it in the William form. So you can see now we have the QR code available. So if you happen, if you want, you can pull out your camera now, if, right now and put it on this. And you will see that it will take you directly to the collection that we created. It was not working on my computer monitor. So. Yeah, it worked. So that's how you can uh, create interactive images, and then you can simply make them available 
on your posters or flyers by adding the QR code. And you can make this a little smaller too if you want. Uh, in case you're going to have a poster, right? If, let's say you have a poster. The printout is going to be even better to read this. Kind of, how do I slide show? Oh, there you go. So you see it's right here, and you can easily scan this, and it will take you again to your hub for that project where you're hosting all your all your files. Um, okay, so in case, uh, uh, we're gonna set up a temporary uh, host for this video. So you will be getting a link to that uh, between today and tomorrow. But in the future, just so you know, okay, so we, you go to google.com, I mean Google, youtube.com, and you can access our playlist by going by searching for Miami Day College. And if you click on the channel, Miami Day College, and then you click on playlist, you will see the playlist for our workshops here. And we're working to uh to add all of these workshop videos in, in this playlist so that it's easily accessible to students. But it's a, it's a process to get these videos up here. Okay, go ahead, Everson. You have a question. Hi, I really thoroughly enjoyed the um the video on what you made. I thought it was very interesting. I have a question to ask you. What department are you in in the um Wilson campus? Because I I I I'm always at the Wilson campus, so I would love to probably get some help on creating some things. And do you do anything dealing with artwork as as it relates to NFTs or no? No, unfortunately, no. I do not do uh, NFTs or artwork. Um, but uh, yeah, my department is learning resources. Uh, here at Wilson Campus, we're based on the library and the computer courtyard. I am located on the courtyard on Building 2, Room 2201. OK. And um, just yeah. the last question I asked, I know that you are familiar with um, Photoshop, and I'm sure probably Illustrator as well, too. Do you know how to use, I think it's called Blender as well? It's to make Blender. like those. Yeah, it's, it sound, it's, uh, I think it sounds familiar. I can definitely make a note of it so that we can. Uh, I can it's do pretty much how to create on. 3D, like to create 3D art, like 3D um, images oh. or artwork. Yeah, I have not used that application yet, uh, but that, I'm noting it. So there's something else I can expand on. Or we can find somebody that can help you out with those. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the again, so here, this, this is our playlist. If you notice, we have the create quick videos uh, posted already. So if you want, you can view this and you can see that I'm showing how to edit out 360 footage and how to add animation. And this is all done on your phone. I can show how to add I can show you how to add the footage on your phone and how to make edits. Uh, you can learn that just from the video, but you're welcome to come in person and we can shoot any footage you want and uh and start playing around and see what we can generate for your project. Okay, so I suppose you, you were answering questions throughout the workshop, so that's good. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to contact us. Please fill out this survey. Make it full screen so that it's legible. Fill out the survey, make any request uh, like you said you're interested in seeing something for blender and if you put that on the survey we'll we'll look to see if anybody in our department has experience with that application and we can hopefully put out a workshop on that application okay last but not least here's my contact information 
uh, feel free to send me an email if you need help with anything. Uh, that is my phone line as well. Uh, leave me a message that goes directly to my email if I don't respond. I'm typically on campus from uh, 12 to 9 p.m. Monday to Thursday, and on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Do we have anything else to add? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. And we'll see you next time. Uh, please come back and visit our other workshops that we have available. Next week would be the introduction to Makers Lab 3D printing. Definitely want to see that one. <laughs>